After the complete elimination of periodontal disease, the dentition of this 55-year-old female patient appears healthy. Nevertheless, around teeth 3-6 and 3-7, probing has revealed bone loss. The radiograph indicates that bone loss and furcation defects will be revealed after the gingival flap has been elevated. Emdogain treatment is indicated for degree 1 and 2 furcation defects. After local block anesthesia, an intracravicular incision is made using a 15C blade. To have good access to the periodontal defect, the incision is extended over several teeth. If possible, relieving incisions for better wound healing should be avoided. The same incision technique will be applied on the lingual side. The intracravicular incision on the lingual side is more easily done by using a Blake's knife. A fine respiratory is used to detach the gingiva. Then a mid-size respiratory is used for the mucoperiosteal flap elevation on both the lingual and buccal sides. One should preserve as much of the gingival connective tissue in the flap as possible. The entire furcation defect is exposed and granulation tissue becomes visible. A curette is used to remove the granulation tissue from the alveolar bone as well as any associated osseous defects so that the root surface is completely visible and fully accessible. Granulation tissue in the lingual area also is removed. As the radiographs revealed earlier, a degree 2 furcation defect is visible on tooth 3 6. In addition, tooth 3-7 will be treated because it too has been classified as a degree 2 furcation defect. A perio mill is used to remove all plaque and calculus. Any impurity would endanger the successful treatment with endogain. Pre-suturing the soft tissue around the defect will help in closing the final flap. Therefore, the site is prepared with modified mattress sutures using A4O suture material with a straight needle. So as to keep the various sutures separate, little mosquitoes are used to retain the different ends of the threads. Pref gel is applied now. The needle is inserted directly into the defect. The pref gel is then left in the defect for two minutes to remove the smear layer by conditioning the root surface. Excess pref gel flows out at the edge of the gingiva. The same procedure is applied to the lingual aspect. After two minutes, the site is rinsed again with sterile saline solution. All contact with blood, or especially saliva, on the root surface should be avoided. Less experienced surgeons can perform a larger flap opening, as shown in this graphic. That can help to better protect the root surface from contamination. Emdogain comes as a ready-to-use gel in a syringe. It is applied immediately after rinsing to the root surface, starting at the most apical bone level. It is important to fully cover the root surface with endogain.
The flap is finally closed using a tension-free technique. Here, the optimal adaptation of the soft tissue is essential. At this stage of the surgery, the assistance of a well-trained nurse is very helpful. The final view shows a well-transformed, tension-free, gingival margin. Clinical experience shows that the application of the remaining gain to the sutured wound margins can improve wound healing. Another important factor for treatment success is adequate patient instruction. For further information, read the guidelines for use carefully or contact your local Straumann representative.